Can we pray now? Please rise up on your feet. There are just three prayer points we're going to pray and I speak over your life. The first prayer point is you're going to ask for grace. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. The grace to imbibe this that you have learned in your spirit so that it works for you. Please lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord everywhere, outside, connecting online. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. In the name of Jesus, someone is praying. Open up your heart and cry to the God of heaven. I declare that I am a doer of the word. The things that make for poverty, I obtain grace to make quality decisions that close these doors from my life, close these doors from my church, close these doors from my business. I am ready to be empowered. The problem is not the recession. The problem is not the, 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 the economy of the nations. Hallelujah. Number two, I'd like you to pray that the spirit of poverty, that spirit that has taken advantage of ignorance or incomplete knowledge and is praying over your finances, praying over your family's finances, I'd like you to decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant, it stops from this night. Is someone praying? Open your mouth and pray. Do not allow yourself continue in lack and want. It is not the will of God and it is totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. Not with the abundance of knowledge that you have access to. Someone pray, I rebuke the spirit of poverty. Whether it has been generational, in the name of Jesus we decree and declare. You will not find a place in my life are you praying? You will not find a place in my children. Pray. You will not find a place in my spouse, not in my company, not in the ministry God has given. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. All the decisions that are pro poverty, I come against you and the spirit that influences my attitude, the spirit that influences my decisions, praying upon my ignorance the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus hallelujah the final prayer point and then it will be my turn to pray for you I'd like you to pray there is the power to get wealth yes there is there truly is the power to get wealth please do not take serious anybody who tells you there is no anointing that prospers people there is the power to get wealth. Let God be true and all men liars. You are going to pray. Father, I've been imparted, I've been anointed before, but the power to get wealth, let it rest upon my life now. Open your mouth and pray. The power to get wealth. God is able to empower men. He's able to provide a supernatural engracing upon your spirit and your mind that causes you to be extraordinary in producing results results that make you extremely valuable results that attracts resources to you results that connects you to the heart of men and help us someone pray someone pray you are about to receive in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let me speak over your life now father in the name of jesus i decree and declare you gave me this instruction to bring this prophetic word as a deliverance in the name of jesus i decree and declare that mantle and that grace that makes for wealth that took ordinary people in scripture and even ordinary people in our day to day and has exalted them bringing beauty for ashes and joy for mourning I decree and declare may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now 
rest upon your business rest upon your ministry rest upon your household rest upon your career in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this grace I speak prophetically over you that everything that represents the shame and the reproach connected to poverty I declare that it dies over your life now every family here that has never experienced genuine prosperity is always from poverty to poverty you saw those before you you saw your parents some of you right now and you're about transferring the same to your children in the name of Jesus may this anointing intercept that progression intercept that progression in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. It was not always so. Every failed business here, every dead or dying business, I decree and declare, may help us show up and lift you back. May help us show up and lift you back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. One of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, I will discuss that when we take the financial series proper. But one of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, please listen to me, is to make you run into debt. One of the major strategies of crippling your finances is to make you get into debt. Now, I know from an economic standpoint, there is good debt, there's bad debt, they say. There is good debt that can be used as a leverage, you know, and bad debt for fueling consumption. I'm not downplaying your knowledge. That is important according to your faith. But let me tell you, the most superior ways to not be in debt. For the Bible says, oh no man, nothing but love. It is a possibility according to your faith. You believe in debt, no problem. The wisdom to manage whatever you receive. Now, I'm speaking largely personally. I know that corporately, many times people would need help from institutions to execute large projects. That is corporate. I'm talking about there is no reason why you should get into debt personally. It's a terrible thing. Because let me tell you what happens. This spirit constrains you and then it forces you to start borrowing money until it becomes an addiction. And every time you borrow money, it will schedule activities to make sure that money was never used for the reason why it was borrowed. So interest begins to pile up while there is no achievement that should bring you that profit. There are many churches today that are in debt. There are many supposed wealthy people today that are in debt there are many you are not free if you are in debt because it sustains the ability to stop you from sleeping the moment you have abundance plus time plus peace you are truly wealthy these three things must happen for wealth to be established if the only thing you have is abundance of financial resources even if you have systems the goal of these systems is to allow you the time and then peace resources time peace that is kingdom wealth that is true financial dominion that tripartite coexistence of wealth time and peace because these are the three most expensive commodities if you lose time and peace whatever else you got by losing them was a bad bargain are we together praise the name of the lord so the spirit of poverty has made many of us, some of us right now probably are in debt of thousands, millions, billions, and you want to get into more. No. Every time people got into debt from scripture, it was the prophetic that brought them out. The prophetic is mandated with the responsibility of rescue, particularly from financial debt. Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought it out. The woman who was owing you know, the prophet who died and left his wife in debt, the prophet said, go and borrow vessels, not oil. To borrow means to plead from people, just bring it. And the Bible says he filled it and he said, go and sell it. And now give, you know, pay off your debt and leave off the rest. The first thing the prophet told the woman to do when you are blessed is pay off your debt. Because you can't live in peace when you have debt. That was the prophet's recommendation. Are we together so I want to pray for you 
if you are in any kind of financial situation of debt, whether personally, as a family, or corporately, in the name of Jesus, please believe this prophecy. Between now and December 2023, I prophesy upon you, come out of that debt. Come out of that financial situation. Come out of that financial situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. How will it happen, Apostle? Very simple. The ministry of men. It, there is no magic as to how people come out of debt. It is always the ministry of men. God will send men disguised as systems, disguised as relationships. It is yours to now discern and be ready when it comes. You don't come out of debt by superstition. When prophecy is released as it was over Samaria, the next thing was men. Even if they are lepers, they will be the ones to use to rescue Samaria. Every time prophecy comes, start paying attention to men. They will come with business ideas. They will come with superior projects. They will come with their well wishes just to bail you out. A show of kindness. Or they will come, somebody can just bless you. Oh, apostle, I'm owing 30 million. And God gives someone an instruction. I will not give you money, but I give you one of my properties as a gift. You value that property and they say it's 80 million. You are out of debt already. It's up to you now. Let me tell you one of the major ways that God brings people out of debt is through the power of land and its resources. Because it is very difficult for somebody to come and give you one million, but he can give you a slice of the earth. And the Bible says, out of the earth comes increase. He says the increase of the earth is for all. He never said the increase of a company. So if everywhere runs to you, go to the earth for your portion. The earth has a portion for all men. This is a strategy. I'm not, I'm not foolish as you hear me talk to you. The earth is a universal bailout system that God uses to bring men out of financial troubles. The increase of the earth is for all, it says. That means if they reject you, if you are in debt, there's no guarantee that the increase in the bank, you have a share there. But this earth is a universal standpoint. The moment you are in debt, trust God to use the power of the earth and its fullness as a mystery to bail you out. Hmm. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, let the power to prosper, the engracing that can rest on men and women and program them for extraordinary success. I declare by the privilege of this apostolic and prophetic mantle, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Be delivered from every financial captivity. Hear me, what your father could not do, what your mother could not do, for some of you, what has never been done before you, I empower you by this anointing, go and do it. Extraordinary results in business, extraordinary results in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, many of you will come and stand here and begin to testify of strange financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this anointing, everybody mandated to help you, especially in this month, in this month of April, leave May, leave June, we're talking April. I don't know where they are, but I can call them by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gave power to men, I declare this week that is coming, I stand by this mantle. I call for strange helpers, strange helpers, strange lifters. In the name of Jesus Christ. That by reason of this that you have heard, some of you, by God, you will step into prepared blessings. You will be sitting down. Someone will call you and give you a car. Call you and give you a house. I'm telling you, call you and give you a job. He has trained you so his hands will not be restrained in blessing you. There are some of you who are in ministry. God will give people instructions and say they should come and hold your hands and see to it that you never go down again. 
every family struggling financially whether to pay school fees to pay rent to complete building projects or maybe to fund projects that are ongoing in the name of jesus this week may ebenezer the helper of men may he arise and surprise you for in jesus mighty name we pray no jesus no help no jesus no guarantee for sustainable um, life, especially even in your finances. Listen to me. The first key I gave you to financial abundance is not money. I told you and I've taught you even when I was dealing with the power to get wealth, that the first spiritual law that, that, that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender. Not tithing, not giving, not value, in order of priority. It is your relationship with Jesus. I want to make an altar call. There are many of us here who really, truly need to make this decision. You need to make it right with Jesus. And to say the primary reason why my family even became victims of these financial vicissitudes is because they ignored Jesus Christ. Perhaps you are the first person who God is giving a chance to correct, to make right what has been wrong. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've done many things that are wrong. I need to make my way right with Jesus. I have just one minute for you. Please do not wait for anyone to be the first. I'd like you to leave your seat right where you are. As the Spirit of God is speaking to you, come and stand right here and do same with all the overflows. There has to be someone coming to Jesus. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. Make your way to this place. All the overflows, make your way to your LED screens. And those who are following online, here is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Koinonia, give them a big hand clap as they come. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for saying yes to a new beginning. Thank you for saying yes to life eternal. Thank you for saying yes. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, make that very quickly. And those who are following online, I'm about to pray. Make sure you participate in the prayer. The Lord bless you. Thank you for your courage. If there are any ones coming, please hurry up so that we start the prayer together. Young and old, you are welcome. Come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning and to bring all this crisis to a permanent end in your life. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and he promises to give you rest. This is Jesus for you. God bless you. Let me request all of you in front, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus, and then say this after me. You don't have to kneel. You can stand, but if you choose to kneel, that's fine. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, with hands lifted, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. Thank you because no one can come to the Father except through the Son. They have come making faith declarations. I decree and declare that they are recipients of eternal life. And in the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. Receive the grace to live a victorious life. And every cause, every yoke that is as a result of yesterday, and not every foundational thing that has trapped your life, I bring you deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has pressed you even financially by reason of this decision, I declare you begin to see the hand of God in your life. You go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen and thank you so very much. Please let me request that you quickly move to my right, which is your left. You have a word. The counselors will have a quick word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly.
Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah.